Welcome to the WISIS Forum 2016. This WISIS Forum is crucial and extremely important as it is the first after the UNGA, United Nations General Assembly overall review and the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals. The UNGA overall review has asked the UN agencies and especially the WISIS action line facilitating UN agencies to review their work plans and to make sure that they are well integrated within the uh, UN agency work plans. I'm joined today with our action line facilitators who are actually facilitating all the different action lines uh, with all the different multi-stakeholders that they work with. I'll move on to our WISIS coordinator at UNESCO uh, Cedric. Uh, Cedric, what are the key priorities do you see for uh, UNESCO and all the different WISIS action lines that are facilitated by UNESCO? Thank you, Gitanjali. UNESCO is a co-organizer of the WISIS Forum and we're pleased uh, to fully participate and to facilitate six action lines all together and to also organize a high-level dialogue. You are right to point out that 2015 was a turning point year and we asked ourselves how to reorient, how to reorganize our work towards the, 2000, uh, the SDGs and to implement the 2030 agenda and the outcomes of the WISIS Plus 10 review uh, in New York just held in December of last uh, year and so we got together and and all our action line uh, meetings at this WISIS forum but one are actually uh, trying to meet and to to work towards the SDGs. As an example, we have the SDG uh, 16, where we brought four different action lines together on access to information, on cultural diversity, on media and ethics, and asking themselves, the SDG 16 is about inclusive and peaceful societies, how can in an interdisciplinary, intersectoral, interaction line way, these SDGs be served? And I'm pleased to, to work with my, my colleagues uh, on this jointly. Thank you, Cedric. Uh, in this regard, to highlight the linkages of the WISIS action lines with SDGs, uh, all the different UN agencies with, re with respect to their mandates got together last year to produce a very relevant matrix that maps each WISIS action line with the different SDGs. Uh, I'm also joined here today uh, by Ms. Hu, who is the Action Line Facilitator for C9 Media. Uh, good morning, Ms. Hu. Good morning. Uh, what uh, key priorities do you see in the fresh priorities you see in the Action Line uh, C9 Media for this new era? Thank you. China Media is a very distinct and special action in all the WISIS action line. In the past 10 years, we have been working with all stakeholders to promote free expression online and offline, to enable free, independent, plural media system in the countries, and also to ensure the quality information and the diversified content to be created in building the information society and also knowledge society as UNESCO visioned. And now facing the SDGs, as we have just discussed in C9 session at this forum, we are discussing two indicators for the SDG 16.10. One is the safety of journalists, the other one is access to information. We feel, actually it was quite much agreed by all the participants that uh, actually the media not only contribute to the one target of 16 point but really is crucial to achieve all the SDGs. Imagine without a free press, without a free independent media to inform governments, to monitor the ac activities on the ground, we couldn't investigate any SDGs will be eventually achieved. That's how we see a media contribution to the overall overall SDGs as well. Thank you. Free and independent media is uh, one of the key uh, priorities for Action Line C9 media. Uh, we also have with us here today uh, the Action Line facilitator C3 uh, access, uh, Mr. Bhanu. Um, uh, so Bhanu, what are the uh, key priorities and the opportunities uh, you see linking your Action Lines to the Sustainable Development Goals? Thank you very much, Gitanjali. I think it is a pleasure to be here at ITU. Uh, 
Um, there are two things you know, that has happened. Something you know, that we have decided to continue with uh, and carry forward, you know, let's, uh, let, me, let me phrase it like this. Uh, the inclusiveness and openness of knowledge will remain as a focus uh, for UNESCO in, in this year and uh, for, for, the, for the few uh, coming years to, to, to come. But at the same time, you know, what we have done is we have somehow you know, tried to link uh, the access with uh, sustainable development goals. So for, for this one, we have in fact you know, taken one very important agenda, which were given to us uh, by the world uh, deciding on Paris Agreement. So what we have done is, you know, we have in fact, you know, uh, we have decided to take a very closer look at how access to climate information will change uh, uh, over the over the years, and what new uh, dimension needs to be brought in to bring this uh, thing uh, uh, before the world, uh, world uh, before the world? Uh, what we have done is we've identified that uh, you know out of 17, 10 goals require scientific information to be given to them almost at a uh, real-time basis. So from UNESCO's side, we will be working uh, very much to improve how uh, the access of knowledge and information can become. Uh, almost at real time, almost uh, uh, as open as possible. And at the same time, we will bring in the dimension of inclusiveness where citizens will play a very, very, very crucial and important part in, in, in this transaction of, access, uh, of information and knowledge. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, real time, open, just access to information. These are the key priorities for Action Line. Uh, uh, C3 access. Uh, we are also joined here today by the Action Line facilitator of uh, Action Line C10 ethics, um, uh, Mr. Paul Hector. Uh, what are the key priorities, opportunities uh, for ethics uh, use at the Action Line C10 uh, you have observed for the coming era? Thank you, Jitanjali. It's a pleasure to be here also. I think if we look around, one of the things we see uh, happening, which is a trend, uh, we have more and more people in more and more regions of the world coming online. Uh, we also see a lot of technological innovation taking place. So, for example, we have uh, <coughs> uh, tools, new tools like, for example, artificial intelligence. We hear about robotics. All of these uh, opening up, you know, really new possibilities, but at the same time, uh, presenting unprecedented challenges. And so against the sort of backdrop where, especially we're in a situation where information and knowledge increasingly are key uh, determinants of people's well-being, uh, key determinants in societies, economies, the political landscape, we see that the ethical dimensions uh, become very, very important because many of these changes, the technological developments, we, we're not quite certain how exactly they're going to uh, impact us and how they're going to play out. How do we make sure that we can maximize the opportunities and at the same time mitigate uh, harmful or potentially adverse consequences? And so because of these uh, reasons, uh, advocacy, awareness raising of these ethical dimensions so we can uh, uh, facilitate more and more public discussions about these trends, uh, support for, uh, for policymakers. We see many uh, policymakers scrambling because, again, uh, as my colleague mentioned, there's a need for uh, instantaneous or just in time responses. And our policy processes have not really evolved to deal with the sort of uh, much uh, more rapid pace uh, of response that's required. So, again, we need to build the capacity of our policymakers to, uh, to adapt to the times. As I said, many of these challenges are new. Uh, we are not certain what the impacts are, so again, research becomes essential. So again, research uh, remains an, a very important uh, pillar of this work. And of course, education. Uh, again, we need to build the capacities of persons uh, so they can participate actively. And we need to also uh, reach out to more users, persons with disabilities, vulnerable groups. Because unless we can reach all of these persons and enhance their potential, then achieving the sustainable development goals will remain a dream. And so I see uh, C10 as being a solid complement along with the work of other UNESCO action lines and also the action lines which are being uh, managed by others in terms of helping uh, to achieve the SDGs.
Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so we hear that uh, for Action Line C10 ethics, research, awareness building, public discussions, uh, capacity building is extremely crucial to make sure that the Action Line can help facilitate achieve the SDGs. We are also joined here today uh, by Mr. Preetam Malur, who is the Action Line facilitator of uh, Action Line C5 cyber security at the ITU. Uh, uh, good morning, Preetam. Hi, Gitanjali. Uh, so we, we heard today about uh, technological innovations, about ICT's uh, help, uh, help facilitating the SDGs. Uh, my question to you would be, how safe is this world uh, uh, for, for these techn technological innovations? What are the key priorities and the opportunities you see in this, uh, in this new phase? Thank you, Gitanjali. And congratulations again on a really successful Visus Forum. Uh, to answer your first question of uh, how safe we are, I think we have a lot to do. So, uh, and in terms of defining priorities, this VSIS forum has uh, clearly helped us a lot, uh, guided us a lot. You know, the, uh, of course, the key message of the VSIS forum uh, has been that ICTs uh, are an enabler for achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, but the uh, follow-up message in terms of security has been uh, that obviously you can, uh, people will uh, use it as an enabler only if they are uh, confident that uh, ICTs are trustworthy. So uh, the importance of cyber security and therefore Action Line C5 has been underlined several times in several different sessions. Uh, and uh, the stakeholders have also been uh, very good in defining the priorities. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, run through a few. You know, the most important priority is that uh, people all agree that, you know, uh, the, the SDGs are cross-cutting, uh, so it affects different sectors. It's, it's quite ambitious and it's cross-sectoral. So the dialogue also has to be uh, multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder. And since we have uh, uh, more than 4 billion people offline, uh, it's, it's also important that uh, when they start coming online, they are included in the dialogue. Okay, so what you need is an inclusive dialogue involving all stakeholders from all nations. Uh, the second priority which has come up is, uh, you know, security uh, shouldn't be an afterthought. Security should be by design. So when uh, you're designing products, uh, you're designing solutions uh, to uh, implement the SDGs, be sure you design security as a part of the, uh, the fundamental design. Uh, the third priority, uh, is uh, you know countries have been uh, defining their uh, national strategies for achieving the SDGs. They, they've just started, but they are there are many who've been announcing this, and we urge the countries to also define a digital agenda as part of their strategy, and as a core component of the digital agenda, they should define a national cybersecurity strategy. Uh, the third is uh, uh, we call for more adoption of international technical standards and also uh, uh, in the importance of bridging the standardization gap because there have been empirical studies which show that uh, adoption of international standards have uh, a direct reflection on the uh, uh, socio-economic uh, well-being of a country. Uh, another uh, priority uh, you know, I can list many, many uh, priorities here. C capacity building, obviously, is an underlying priority. You know, you need, there are many countries which need uh, help with uh, building the capacity in cybersecurity, in uh, organizational structures, for example, uh, computer incident response centers. There are still 91 countries without a national cert. That is clearly a priority area. Awareness uh, building, you know, uh, assessments, tr training. The, 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 I can go on and on and on. Uh, in fact, the VSIS plus 10 uh, uh, high-level event uh, in 2014, the outcome document of that, uh, where they analyzed the action lines and also helped uh, define some other priorities, is an excellent guiding document for us. Okay. Thank you, Preetam. Uh, indeed, building a, building a safe and secure world is uh, crucial for any ICT uh, for sustainable development projects to be successful. Uh, we thank all the VSIS Action Line facilitators who joined us today. This was the final uh, interview talk show of VSIS Action Line facilitators. We heard from different UN agencies about the key priorities, about their key opportunities, challenges, uh, 
and the work plans that they have uh, for uh, this upcoming year and for the coming years uh, till 2025. Uh, we thank you for uh, joining us and we hope that we will have you back in Visis Forum 2017 as Visis Forum is the perfect platform to get together, to learn, network, share and for all of us to work as one in a multi-stakeholder format. Thank you very much. Thank you.